Good evening, hello and welcome to Viewpoint. I'm Anusha Soni. The Supreme Court handed down a split verdict in the hijab matter. The two judges on the bench had divergent views. While the split verdict paves the way for a constitution of a larger bench, the ban on hijab by the Karnataka High Court remains effective and that's the legal position right now. As a sharp polarised debate pans out in the public sphere, the top court of the country will have to settle some important questions. First of all, what are the limits of individual freedom? To what extent can the state-run institutions curb upon religious expression and whether the right to privacy and dignity is violated if Muslim girls are asked to remove their hijab in classrooms? We'll talk about all these aspects. First up, a special report. There is no end to the hangama over hijab. Seven months after the Karnataka High Court upheld a government order banning hijab in educational institutes. Petitions challenging the hijab ban led to a split verdict in the Supreme Court. While one judge, Justice Hemant Gupta, dismissed the petitions, the other judge, Justice Sudhanshu Dhulia, was of a differing opinion. He said asking girls to take off their hijab is an attack on their privacy and dignity. He said that under the Indian constitutional scheme, wearing a hijab should be simply a matter of choice. It may or may not be a matter of essential religious practice, but it is still a matter of conscience, belief and expression. He said the government order and restrictions on hijab goes against value of fraternity and human dignity. The case has also to be seen in the perspective of the challenges already faced by a girl child in reaching her school. And are we making the life of a girl child any better by denying her education merely because she wears a hijab? Prime Minister, I would like to appeal to the Prime Minister that our education will be removed and our hijab will not be a conflict in our hijab. Because look, the hijab is our right and we have to follow it. The matter will now be placed before the Chief Justice of India, who will constitute a larger bench to hear the case afresh. Till then, the hijab ban remains in place. I expect the judgment. Definitely it will be in favour of Karnataka's rules and act. The whatever the rules and regulations which have been followed now will be valid till the judgment of the higher bench comes. But many in the opposition are hoping for a more favourable order from a larger bench. जो हाई कोर्ट का जजमेंट था मेरी राय में, it was bad in law, bad in terms of its contents, और it had misused कुरानी कमेंट्रीज एंड ट्रांसलेशन, this has serious ramifications should not have been allowed. But at a time when women worldwide are demanding not to wear the hijab, can individual choice override institutional autonomy? Well, let's take a look at the key pointers of this split verdict and how essentially the two judges on the bench, Justice Eman Gupta and Justice Zulia, differed in their opinions about this matter. Justice Sudhan Shudulia said that quash the government order of the 5th of February removed the restrictions it's violative of their right to privacy and dignity under the Putta Swami judgment, the nine-judge bench judgment of the Supreme Court of India. Justice Heyman Gupta said that there is a divergence of opinion. He more stressed on the need for you know uniforms, how they are important, how there are limits to secularism, and how institutional autonomy is very, very important. Justice Dhulia venturing into essential religious practices not needed at all. He said the test of ERP, central religious practice, is not important. It's a matter of choice. Uh, Justice Heman Gupta said that hijab is not part of the essential religious practice. He agreed with the Karnataka High Court and what was said earlier. It's a matter of choice, nothing more, nothing less. He went on to say and make some very strong comments about the fact that when you ask a Muslim girl to remove her hijab, her uh, dignity is violated in some way. That's what Justice Dhulia has said. But Justice Gupta disagrees. He says that uh, the Putta Swami judgment is a new jurisprudence which is emerging and it is not correct to simply copy paste the judgment there has to be limits as to how privacy is going to survive within the institutional norms education of girl child is important it's a matter of individual choice uh, Justice Gupta says that management taking a call on uniform not violative of fundamental rights many would argue is this a legally tenable argument? This is a very emotive appeal that court is making, but to what extent is this legally tenable? 
I want to cut across to my colleague Harish Upadhyay, who is with us on the broadcast. Harish, we broke down the legalities of this order. How two judges disagreed on, you know, different views that they had in Karnataka politics. How will the split verdict be seen? Uh, more importantly, right now it's the Karnataka High Court, which is, uh, you know, the earlier order which had come in, which is the correct position of law because law wouldn't operate in a void. Uh, but from the side of the government, in the run-up to the elections, will this issue continue to dominate the political discourse? Absolutely. Uh, the Karnataka government, in fact, interprets this order as uh, a continuation of a process. They are saying uh, uh, we wanted to deal with this legally. We brought in an order. Then the Karnataka High Court upheld that order. Now the Supreme Court has given uh, a split verdict, but we are very confident that uh, when this goes to a larger bench, the points that we have made will also be upheld. They are saying the fact that uh, their order hasn't been quashed completely uh, by this uh, particular two-judge uh, two bench means that they, they do see merit in uh, some of the arguments made by the Karnataka uh, AG. At the same time, remember, it's not just the government. The petitioners too are claiming that they too have something to take from this split verdict. They are saying uh, for the first time in their entire legal battle, they are seeing some hope. Some of their points have been brought. In fact, uh, some of the points made by the petitioners have been echoed or uh, mentioned the order passed by Justice Dulia on whether uh, the privacy stops at any particular place yeah. or it goes with the person and why should school be any different or the fact that it's not just about religion, it's also about uh, choice, it's also about Article 19 and 14. So the petitioners believe that uh, they have seen some positive in this for the first time in their entire legal battle. Uh, they have at least one judge who's uh, believing and uh, taking some of the points made by them. Interesting. And as you rightly said, Harish, this is going to have implications in the politics of Karnataka as well. Thank you for joining us on the broadcast and getting us all those details. Joining us on the broadcast is our full panel of guests, Mr. Ashwini Dubey, who's a Supreme Court advocate, Abha Singh, who's a lawyer, Rat Mr. Ratan Sharda, who's a researcher, uh, also a political analyst and author himself is joining us on the broadcast. Uh, Shrata Bashish uh, Shivana, who's an advocate petitioner, is also joining us on the show. Mr. Ratan Sharda, I want to begin with you. And I want to quote you the portions that the Supreme Court essentially has spoken about. This is something that Justice Dhulia has said. That by asking the girls to take off their hijab before they enter the school gates, it's an invasion on their privacy, it's an attack on their dignity, ultimately it's a denial to them of secular education, violative of Article 19.1a, 21 and 25.1. Do you agree with Justice Dhulia? In the, in the spirit of a constructive discussion around the Supreme Court judgment, once again, there's one judge on the bench who's saying that somewhere you have violated their right to privacy and dignity. Mr. Sharda. Well, when he says that a secular institution, secular education, that to speak of removing hijab as an invasion of privacy, hmm. I think this is very, very Sharia argument. This is not a secular argument. He also talked about dignity. Hmm. So does it mean that uh, the women who don't wear hijab or scarf or something, they are they are undignified? Hmm. And secondly, I have a paper with me, the uh, copy of the particular circular of the school. Actually, I don't know why this confusion. It clearly says, girl students are permitted to wear the scarf inside the campus. Scarf yeah. is hijab. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, however, uh, the, uh, however, the color of the scarf should be that of the dupatta. No student be allowed to wear any other clothes inside the campus, including the college canteen. Hmm. 